tonight from Fernwood, Fernwood tonight, 30 minutes of very remarkable entertainment, coming to you live with your host for tonight, Mr. Barth Gimbel. Tonight, Barth's guests will be Doug and Diane Mitchell, who don't sing well enough to even bother, Mr. Larry Guy, who proves blood is sicker than radio, and Mrs. Betty Froelich and her daughter Sandy, who got in trouble in the back seat, and Happy Kind and the Mirthmakers. And me, I'm Jerry Hubbard, and now here's your host and mine, Mr. Bart Gimbel. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Are you hurt? <laughs> Good evening, and thank you very much. Welcome to Fernwood tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I am Barth Gimbel. <laughs> oh, okay, we already did that. Um, you know, I just, I just can't really believe the tremendous response we've gotten since I made public last night my offer to personally aid and financially aid the underprivileged great American dreamers right here in Fernwood by helping them fulfill their dreams with an encouraging word and a quick boost in the wallet. Boy, I hope, it's, um, hope it isn't this hard all week to come up with a winner, because we racked our brains to come up with tonight's winner. Sorry, couldn't all win, but I think, you, uh, I think you'd have to understand that if we sent out $10 to everyone who watches the show, uh, well, we'd be out uh, hundreds of dollars within a very short time. So, we did choose one, though, and it's a little tear-stained, to be honest, but I'll do my best to try to read through the part where the pen tell ran, okay? <laughs> Got it right here. Okay. <clears throat> Dear Barth, knows his first name basis, it's kind of nice. Dear Barth, I, I know your show comes on kind of late, but I try to watch it almost every night. Well, that's nice. We watch the other talk shows, such as, and she names some other shows here and some other hosts. <laughs> she goes on and she says, and she says, we also like the new time for Lucy, because this way we can watch it with the kids and so forth. And then she goes on here and she goes on. F Troop. Uh, <laughs> so on. And uh, don't show the reels in the proper order. Okay, no, no. <laughs> here it is, here it is. Barth. My unfulfilled American dream is that someday I can find a way to help my husband feed and dress himself despite his misshapen... There's nothing back here. Is there a second page, Jerry? Jerry? <laughs> there should be a second page or something. This, uh, there's nothing on here. I don't see anything from here, no. Well, there's no, uh, there's no name or anything. I mean, we can't send... <laughs> oh, boy. And we can't... We can't send $10 to Mrs. No Name on No Street. Where's the second page or a name? Or anything? Okay, I guess that just means there's going to be $20 in the dream chest for tomorrow night. Uh, oh, boy. In the meantime, remember that jackpot, okay, folks? And keep dreaming. <laughs> Jerry, tell them all about it. Send your great American dream to Only a Dream, Gimbal Co. Enterprises, <laughs> Promotions Department, Box 78924, Fernwood, Ohio. All entries become the property of Barth Gimbal and Gimbal Co. Enterprises, and none can be returned except in case of emergency. <laughs> For emergencies, please enclose $5 emergency return fee. <laughs> and good luck from your friends at Channel 6. The dream people. The dream people. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the unmistakable sound of Jerry Hubbard. That's Thank a heck of much. a thing you're doing, a well, heck of a project you're I, undertaking. I'm wish, sorry about the last part of yeah, that letter. There's nothing on here at all. Well, who's and the idiot who opened it? Maybe it got lost uh, someplace. <laughs> I think you opened it, didn't you? Well, it's uh, probably... <laughs> If her husband can't dress himself and wash himself, she probably Maybe gave him the letter and said, deal. mail it, and he bites it all up. Well, the stamp is placed properly, and it's the right side up. A lot of times you'll see him all go oh, yes, so. yeah. But right now, he's probably saying, whoops, I found this last half of the letter. Maybe he'll ma mail that in, but the first part won't make any sense, and Maybe. it wouldn't be Maybe a winner. True. So, yeah. At any rate, we have guests tonight, and my first guests are our brother and sister team. They are actually a semi-musical act. They don't uh, sing very well. 
So they they just move their lips to another person's record. It's kind of clever. It's called lip syncing. They do dance, however, and we don't know how well, but uh, apparently it's better than their singing. We would like to point out that this dancing they're doing is their own dancing. Yes. Uh, it's a lot harder to... Uh, <laughs> I mean, they're not, they're not just shuffling their, le their legs and feet to someone else's shoes. It's a lot harder to fake dancing than it is singing. I guess unless you have uh, wooden legs, you could hollow them out and put your feet in there and get a battery going and really get those wooden toes tapping. Or you know how they have a sand dance. If you could sweep away the sand and put down salt and have a salt dance. But then, of course, Barth, you'd need salt and batteries. <laughs> Jerry, I think we're all thinking of a salt and battery right now. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> or if you had a wooden head, you could maybe put a battery in there. <laughs> now you're thinking. And pretend you're thinking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or leave out the, the battery and pretend you're an announcer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, like Pinocchio with his uh, wooden nose, this is getting longer and longer, and we better cut it short and get to the kids, or they won't be kids anymore, will they? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate... Uh, we have these people, they are kids or extremely short. They're here to sing. <laughs> or middle-aged couple that take extremely good care of themselves. <laughs> Great diets, that's the other thing. Their names are Doug and Diana. They are the Mitchell twins. And here pretending to accompany them on the clarinet, of course, is our own happy kind. Maestro, kick it off. To love daddy with the beautiful eyes What a pair of lips, I'd like to try it for size I'll just tell her, baby, won't you swing it with me Hope you tell her, baby, what a wing it will be So I said politely, darling, may I intrude? He said, don't keep me waiting when I'm in the mood First I held him lightly and we started to dance Then I held him tightly, what a dreamy romance And I said, hey, baby, it's a quarter to three There's a mess of movement, won't you share it with me? Well, he answered, baby, don't you know that it's rude to keep My two lips waiting when they're in the mood in the mood, that's what he told me. In the mood, and when he told me in the mood, my heart was skipping and didn't take me long to say I'm in the mood now. In the mood. Happy, happy. Why don't you come and join him too? Come on over here. You were part of that. You certainly were. We pretended to accompany them, and we all pretended to watch. And we pretended to enjoy it. That's right. I'm sure everyone's wanting to know, um, how old are you folks? I'm 12. I'm 13. I'm 40. <laughs> well, all I can say is that was quite a number, and... Uh, Kind of curious, you, you, your young kids, 12 and 13, and you expect you maybe come out and do something like the Osmond family or something like that, ah. some of the modern stuff. You do that old song there, In the Nude, uh, Mood. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Um, you know, I expected something like from Kiss or Led Zeppelin or the Rolling Stones, something a little more, more modern, and I'm kind of surprised you would do In the Mood. But well, like... I think it's great, because uh, today the trend seems to be for everything that's hip and today and now. You know, I mean, now is great, but what about then? What about the old times? I remember a few years ago, all the dances that were popular, right. and they're not popular anymore. I mean, you try to get up on a dance floor and do the twist in this day and age, and you get laughed off the floor. <laughs> That's all I want to say, but... But what about politics? What about Richard Nixon? Sure, he has a bad leg. What about Franklin Roosevelt? He was in a wheelchair, and he wasn't even being accused of anything. <laughs> say is K Sarah Sarah out of sight out of mind and that, that is not right no it's not well as you see I'm not much of a talker but you know there's a poem wait a minute there's a poem there's a poem I found just about a year ago that that expresses this better than I could and I wonder if could I read this <laughs> <laughs> Wild horses couldn't stop you, huh, Jerry? Probably quicker than a 77 Pinto. <laughs> it says it better than I think I could, though. I'm sure of that. Yeah. <laughs> Kids, you should listen to this, too, because you'll, you'll, you'll grow old. Remember me, remember me when I have passed away. 
Remember that I lived and died, as you will too one day. If I can write these few short lines, it will not be in vain. If after I am dead and gone, you still recall my name, remember me. And I think it's wow, well, well, Jerry, that's actually, actually, uh, that's actually very pretty. Who wrote it? Who wrote it? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Who knows? It's an old poem. Probably some old guy dead and gone. <laughs> Okay, speaking of dying, uh, we'll be right back after these words. <laughs> I think you all know my next guest. He's been on our show before, and thanks to something called the Options slash Hours, he's back on again tonight. This time it's for a good cause, however, so please welcome the man with the mouth, Fernwood's favorite DJ, Mr. Larry Guy. Uh. Boy, you look sharp. Thank you, yes, thank you. <laughs> hey, I like that laugh, too. How do you do it? Oh, that's all from the diaphragm, yes, Jerry. It's just... <laughs> Not even from the heart. <laughs> Listen, I'll tell you, you don't even have to think anything's funny. That's a great advantage, yeah. Yeah. And I don't. <laughs> um, unless it's these suits we're talking about, that's pretty... Hey, thank <laughs> you very, very much. much. Great-looking shoes. Oh, it's thank you, <laughs> thank you. Huh? Old Elton John boots. Yeah, you found another outfit like that. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, Barth, uh, my wardrobe is my way of saying hello, world, without even opening my mouth. Really? Whoa. Yeah. Of course, I do have a way of saying hello, world, by opening my mouth. Would you like to hear that? Didn't we? Or oh, you have it better? Yeah. Okay. okay. Ready? <laughs> hello, world. <laughs> Simple. Thank you. Right on. I have a question for you. I, I'm sure it must be on the minds of just about everyone watching in right now. We always give them that benefit of the doubt, you know. Um, they're probably asking themselves the same thing. I think a lot of us are. What the? What are you doing here tonight? Oh. <laughs> okay, if we could just get serious for a moment and uh, take a little pause here on our busy schedule for a word from me. And that word, ladies and gentlemen, is blood. That's right, I'm talking about that precious liquid that flows through yours, through mine, if I know anything about the doctor business, through just about everybody's veins. Yeah, mm -hmm. Matter of fact, it's even, it even is still in a lot of dead people's veins. I don't know if you knew that or not. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, we knew that. A lot of interesting facts about dead people. Did you know that after you die, your fingernails and your hair continue to grow? Sure. Yes. As well as the beard on your face? Sure. Knew that, yeah. Did you? Did you know that after you die, often your heart starts beating again? No, I didn't know that. <laughs> Well, that last bit may not be true, but the first part. <laughs> but it's just one of those medical oddities. Okay, blood. That's why you're here. Um, yeah, you see... You know a little bit about blood? Why don't you explain what you and blood are doing together? Well, I'm very, very excited about this, Barth, because, you see, I have been named this year's chairman of the Fernwood Blood Drive. Hey. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and I... Let me tell you. Thanks, buddy. I'm alive. Uh, I, I take the uh, job pretty seriously. I've come up with a campaign that I call the Larry Guy Wacky Blood Drive. <laughs> Uh, it sounds kind of silly, but I think I've come up with some pretty groovy ways to get people to give blood. Uh -huh. Well, I think you are just the guy to come up with those wacky, groovy ways. Just a <laughs> yeah. wacky, groovy guy. <laughs> and the backbone of my campaign this year, Barth, is that I'm going to be enlisting the help of my young fans, all the guys and gals, the little princes and princesses who listen to my show out there. Uh, now, they're not going to be giving blood. They're going to be collecting the blood. Now, here's what they're going to do. They're going to go door to door with their little syringes. <laughs> And their little pint bottles, mm -hmm. and you are going to be able to give blood in the safety and the convenience of your own home, your den, your playroom. Larry, um, I don't want to strike a pose here as the worry wart, but um, I'm not sure that everyone uh, I know myself, I wouldn't really trust a kid with my car, let alone my blood. No. <laughs> well, I can dig it, I can dig it, I can dig it. Dig it, dig it, do what you're saying is true. No, in all seriousness, uh, uh, these kids have been well-trained by their gym instructors. They, they know where to find the vein, how to draw out the old big red, you know, how to keep it fresh in those pint bottles, and what to do should, uh, let's say, one of the donors go into shock or something like that. Yeah, uh, what about infections? Infections? Or dirty needle, you know, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, well... You hear about it all the time. 
Well, we thought about that, but, you know, that's going to... An infection takes a couple of days to set in. The kids True. can't wait around forever. They've got a lot of busy work, so, uh... I guess we'd have to let somebody else take care of the infections. Like, like a doctor or something. Hey, that's a groovy idea. <laughs> I can dig it. Uh, I'd like to see some of these Fernwood people, these uh, bleeding hearts, get out and bleed for a good cause here in Fernwood and open up those veins. We have a lot of veterans here in town from World War II, sure. Vietnam. Probably a lot of them were wounded and they Why never not? got the proper amount of blood and we can give them a pint or two now and let's make it up to them. <laughs> Better late than, uh, sorry. That's a wonderful thought, Sheriff. Yeah. I could use your help. So, Larry, your, your, your plan sounds fascinating. Maybe it tastes gruesome. I don't know. <laughs> Some people paint it the sight of um, blood. Some yeah. people paint it the sight of your clothes. <laughs> so, everyone's different. That's what makes this world go round. Those hits just keep on coming. Don't they? <laughs> It'd be it's very simple. It's a good move, too. I mean, we need blood. We... Uh, God forbid we should ever need some ourselves, but yeah. there are other people who will always be needing it, and if we can give it, that's good. I think it's a simple... Uh, very simple. If you've never given blood, ladies and gentlemen, it's very simple. You simply stick out your arm, they put the needle in, they put the cotton on, and that's it. So let's just hope, cross our fingers here, that for the rest of the entire blood drive, most of is just going around like this. Okay? <laughs> Happy, thank you. We're back. Thank you. What a show tonight. If you just joined us, we're here with Happy Kind of the Mirth Makers over there. My co-host, Mr. Jerry Hubbard, uh, two children, and this fellow. Um, <laughs> And here's time for actually a very special time on Firma tonight. From time to time, we invite the public on the show, plain, simple folks like yourselves, to come on and air your differences in a mature manner. We will then let our audience be the jury and vote on the issue at hand. If you have a beef with someone you hate and, and the two of you can't work it out, maybe you should call us and try to, try to get on Barry the Hatchet. There's a problem here, but we're gonna patch it, cause now's the time to bury the hatchet. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. To my left is Betty Froelich? Froelich. Froelich, okay. Mm -hmm. And to my right is her 16-year-old daughter, Sandy Froelich, right? A frolic. Oh, frolic. <laughs> okay, Sandy, uh, why don't you start by uh, just telling us your side of the problem? This will be Sandy on the left here. Uh, well, the problem is that my mother doesn't trust me. That's it's important for me to be trusted by my parents. Mm -hmm. But just because she has such a suspicious mind, she makes up these impossible rules for me to live by. Okay, now what, what rules would those be? For instance, she won't let me go out with any guy who drives a van. Uh, is it true that you have no trust at all in Sandy's morals? I trust her when she's up in her room studying algebra. In the room? <laughs> But trust in your room and lust in a van are two different two things. Different things, no question about it. Right. And those are not vans, they are beds on wheels, my friend. Ooh. The doors are jammed shut. If there are any windows, the curtains are always tied tight. Some of them even have water beds, stereo music, a bar. Those guys are driving around a four-wheel motel room, and I don't want my young daughter in the back of one of those things. <laughs> I can see your point. I wonder if they're available here in town, any merchants. <laughs> Mom, I admit you can get in trouble in a van if you're that kind of person, but if I wanted to get in trouble, I could do it anywhere. I have the same morals whether I'm in a van or whether I'm in church. Could it be maybe that you're just a little bit jealous? Maybe because, uh, well, you and uh, your husband, I'm sure you're legally married, uh, you had to uh, <laughs> do your making out, I guess the word I'm looking for, in a rowboat. You know what I mean? <laughs> If I was in a rowboat, at least we were rowing. Okay. I've seen Sandy's girlfriend, her name is Jenny, get into a van with her boyfriend in front of the house and it didn't move for four hours. <laughs> well, maybe they were just trying to save gas, Mom. Mm -hmm. You got to be uh, brought a new meaning to the uh, term fun trucking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's one for bar. <laughs> sure that. Bar's 
sorry. I'm sorry. I know you're serious. I happen to know that all they were doing was sitting there and listening to the Rolling Stones. I know that for a fact. Okay, uh, can you tell us um, more about that waterbed in the back? That's, that's really what's uh, interesting. Well, I saw it. I saw it with my own eyes, plain as day. And let me tell you, that's not only disgusting, it's dangerous. Somebody rear ends you, your daughter could wash up on the dashboard. No! <laughs> not approve of your daughter dating guys with vans. Is that correct? No. Okay, and Sandy here, you're a little upset uh, that your mother doesn't really have the kind of faith in you that uh, you wish she had, and she doesn't really believe in you. So I think right now it's time for us to bury the hatchet here and let our audience decide. Mother and daughter both promise to abide by your decision, audience, so what will it be? All those in favor of the ban on the van, please applaud. You must work in a rather small office. Um, I'm a now, homemaker. I have no doubt. Um, <laughs> now, all those in favor of Sandy being trusted, like any normal 16-year-old who simply wants to... Well, it's close. Um, <laughs> do we need to go once more? We're all right? Okay, it looks like the uh, winner here is Sandra. Mrs. Freilich? Freilich. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do please don't feel bad. You may have lost the battle, but you certainly haven't lost the war, and you're not going to go away empty-handed. Uh, our own Jerry Hubbard has some lovely gifts for you. Jerry, what do we have for Mrs. Freilich? Freilich. That's right, Mrs. Freilich. We have some lovely parting gifts for you from Alvy's Patio Shop. A set of barbecue mitts, each with a funny saying from W.C. Fields. Your patio shop where their motto is if you don't buy it here you'll have to drive to cleveland <laughs> so you can see all's well that ends well and i think you're good friends now we'll be right back after these words <laughs> Good night, everybody. See you later. Also appearing on tonight's show are Linda Shelton as Diana Mitchell, Freddie Meyer as Doug Mitchell, Jerry McGovern as Larry Guy, Rhoda Williams as Betty Froelich, and Susan Denbo as Sandy Froelich. <laughs>